Hi there, welcome back to the video series of deploying production ML models with TensorFlow Serving. My name is Wei, and I'm a developer advocate at Google. In this episode, we're going to discuss some advanced TF Serving features. We're going to talk about serving JAX models, creating new servables to serve non TensorFlow models, and distributed serving. Note that some of these features are highly experimental and subject to change. So be very cautious if you want to deploy them into production. Let's start with serving JAX models. What is JAX? JAX is a framework for high-performance numerical computing and machine learning research. It is open sourced by Google Research and has been used in cutting-edge research such as DeepMind AlphaFold and AlphaCode. We won't discuss how to train JAX models here. Feel free to watch our JAX session in our ML Community Day last year to learn more about JAX. If you have a trained JAX model now, you can serve it with TensorFlow Serving today. The way to do it is to convert JAX models into Save the Model with a tool called JAX2TF. JAX2TF allows you to generate Save the Model from JAX models with some limitations. Once the model is converted successfully, it behaves like a regular saved model trained from TensorFlow. Please check out the JAX4TF documentation to learn more. To serve a JAX converted saved model with TF serving, make sure to enable XLA JIT by setting the XLA CPU compilation enabled flag, as we discussed in our last video. Moving on to create new servables. Although TF Serving is primarily designed to serve TensorFlow models, it is also flexible and can be extended to support non TensorFlow models. In addition to JAX models, we have seen other ML model support from the user community. For example, XGBoost models. To support non TF models, the first thing you need to do is to create a new kind of servable. A servable is the underlying object that clients use to perform computation. For example, a lookup or inference. The dynamic manager applies the configured version policy to determine the next action to take, which could be to unload a previously loaded version or to load the new version. If the manager determines that it's safe, it gives the loader the required resources and tells the loader to load the new version to run the inference via the serverable handle. Here's an illustration of the lifecycle of a TF serving inference request for a TensorFlow model. The client sends a prediction request. The TensorFlow predictor will get the serverable handle, which is a saved model. Then the TensorFlow session will run the model and generate output tensors which will be wrapped in a prediction response and sent back to the client. Conceptually, if you want to serve non-TensorFlow models, you will need to implement your own predictor. You also need to implement the logic to get the serverable handle and run the inference logic you want. Let's walk through some code. First step is to create a new serverable. To do that, we first create a new Aspired Version Manager. Next we create a new source adapter and plug it into the manager. After that, create a simple path source, which specifies the path of your serverable files, and plug the path source into your adapter. We can take a look at our hash map serverable example to see how this is done. Also, the TensorFlow serverable is a good reference. Step two is to consume your serverable in your own predictor. You can see here, we are getting the serverable handle and calling a specific predict method with the serverable plus the request information to run inference. In our model server, we also need to create a predictor to handle the incoming request. So when the inference request comes in, we can call the predictor's predict method, which is defined in step two. Similarly, for gRPC request, the predictor will call the predict method defined in step two. So this is roughly how you serve non-TensorFlow models. The overall process is a bit involved, so I'm certainly skipping some details here. 
for example, changing proto and build files. But hopefully this helps you get started. The last topic for today is distributed serving. There is a clear trend to train larger and larger language models and recommendation models in the machine learning community. Many machine learning models have to make inferences over items in large corpuses of potentially billions of items. The elements of these corpuses are often represented using large embedding tables, which in the most extreme cases are too large to fit in the RAM of the host machine. Some of the biggest production models have exceeded one terabyte in size, so there's no way to fit this kind of large models into a single machine. In this case, we need to shard the giant embedding table and split it over multiple machines or running TensorFlow serving to serve the embedding shard. We could then have a master graph that processes input requests, farms out requests to the various leaf shards, post processes their responses, and returns the final response to the user. TF Serving has released an experimental distributed serving feature that allows you to do just this. This feature is called Remote Predict TensorFlow Operator, and it enables you to make a predict RPC from within a TensorFlow graph executing on machine A to another graph hosted by TensorFlow Serving on machine B. We will not go into the details of how this works, but feel free to check out the guide here if you have the needs of distributed serving. So to summarize, today we introduced several advanced tier of serving features to you, including serving JAX models, creating new serverables, and distributed serving. Again, some of these features are highly experimental, and we expect some rough edges in them. Meanwhile, we do hope you could provide your feedback to us on GitHub issues or through other channels if you try them out. With that, thank you for watching the last episode of this video series. Please stay tuned for more updates from TensorFlow Serving. Thank you.